Great video. Was, was that not the best intro video you've ever seen? Maybe not the greatest. best, but one of the best. One of the greatest. One of the greatest introductions to Two Guys One Guest. A minute long, but worth your time. Yep. Worth your time. Every second. Welcome to the show, by the way. And guess what, everybody? What? Two Guys One Guest is finally going to have a guest. After about three and a half episodes. Yeah, th three to four episodes. How can you be a half? Around three episodes. Around three episodes, we're finally going to have a guest back. And who is that guest, Eduardo Ortiz? Uh, his name is Jared Montz. Who is that yeah. guy? He is a professional retired soccer player. Uh, this Jared Montz guy is a great guy. Great. Awesome. He uh, played for uh, the Chicago Fire, the Puerto Rican Islanders. And he also played for the Vancouver Whitecaps, who will be in the MLS next season. And the New Orleans Shell Shock. And also, uh, you know, this is a great chance for us to actually interview a pro soccer player. First who chance. Turned into a businessman. But yeah, you know, uh, great. It was a great interview. Went really good. Yeah. A lot of, uh, a lot we of had him via satellite, unfortunately. He cannot be yeah. here. Too expensive to fly him in. Yeah. And yeah, we asked him a lot of questions and actually makes a prediction to see who will be the champion this year for the MLS. Uh, we, know who, we know who's going to be the champion this year. Obviously, we're showing up with the shirt saying to Sarah saw Ramirez for that. Yep. So enjoy the interview. Jared yep. Mons right here for you. Well, this is Mr. Jared Mons. Jared Mons. Our famous guest. Our first ever famous guest. So welcome to the show, Mr. Mons. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. How y'all doing? Pretty good. How are you over there in Louisiana? I'm great. New Orleans. Finished right? up a coaching session, so everything's good. Good, good. We're going we're gonna to be asking you about... Five questions that we came up with All right. last night. Yeah. So my friend here, Eduardo, will begin. Okay. Well. Uh, All right. What made you want to start a uh, Jared Mont Online Soccer Academy? I wanted to start the Online Soccer Academy because I um. Sorry, I didn't realize he was just leaving the screen there. Um, I wanted to start the Online Soccer Academy because I thought it would be a cool way to teach players how to train on their own time outside of team training because most players in America only train twice a week with their club team. So in order to make it to the college level, the pro level, or just to become a better soccer player, you need to do some individual work outside of team training. And, uh, and most kids don't know what to do on their own in the backyard. So I felt like there was a niche there to teach them how to train on their own in the backyard. Um, what made you start playing soccer at such a young age? Uh, five. You researched your thinking. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't. I don't remember. I was only five. I think. I think my parents just signed me up, and I just liked it after that. Loved it. Was, well, when you played at, we are uh, informed that you played at Lane University, right? Uh, yeah. And uh, how did it feel to go undefeated and get the national championship? Oh, it was incredible. It was a great feeling. Um, it was an awesome time. It was we had a real we were in a really strong conference and the year before that we went sixteen and one and we didn't get voted into the playoffs. So for us it was basically we had to go undefeated just to prove that no one could take it away from us. And um, we went undefeated and we won the final. It was just incredible. It was my junior year and good group of guys on that team and it was an awesome feeling. Great feeling. Mr. Jared Montz, what was your biggest accomplishment and what would you say was the hardest part about achieving that great accomplishment? Good question. Um, I think <laughs> I think playing playing why you know, as a as a player, my biggest accomplishment was probably becoming a pro player. And and staying there for as long as I did before I got injured, um, just there were so many things against me growing up. I didn't have the national, you know, youth national team caliber backing me. I didn't go to a big Division One college. I went to a Division Two college. Um, I had to fight and and work hard on the field and work hard off the field as well to make connections and network with the right people and make sure when I did get my chance, I took it. So, you know, I it's kind of a bit of a story, but, uh, you know, I had to go 
through quite a few hoops to get to being a professional soccer player. So the day I did sign with the Chicago Fire it was a huge, huge moment for me and you know, one of my biggest accomplishments. That was my dream, and I and I got to reach it and live it for a while. And you got to play against the uh, the Mexican, the Mexican, the, the Mexican club, uh, America, America, right? Didn't you yeah, there? Club America. Yeah, that's right. It was a fun game. Uh, here's one right here. We also know that you played semi-pro with the New Orleans Shell Shockers, right? Yeah. And, and is there any difference between playing semi-pro and the MLS with the Chicago Fire? Is there like yeah, there's a there's a big difference in that. Um, it's sort of it's called it's called the PDL League, Premier Development League, which is uh, I just call it semi-pro. Um, but it's mainly for when I was in college, it's for college age players uh, to participate on a, a more competitive team in the summer. And the thought is that they would be developed into professionals when they get out of college or help them. So, yeah, there's a big difference in, in the talent level of play. And, of course, the guys in the PDL aren't getting paid to play soccer unless they're getting paid under the table. Don't get paid. Did you get paid under the table? <laughs> no. I didn't get paid under the table.